all programs of this caliber have preferences. Now, if we were all robots, you wouldn't need preferences because everybody would be doing everything the exact same way. Preferences allow me to conform Final Cut Pro to my workflow and therefore make me more efficient. So go up to the word Final Cut Pro and go down to Preferences right there. Here they are. The preferences we have are fivefold. General Editing Playback Import and Destinations. Let's start on the left and work our way through. Save Library Backups. Yeah, can't imagine why you wouldn't want to do that. But where do you want them? You can choose your own destination. Time Display. Here's the time display. Hours, minutes, seconds, and frames, but you can change that. Now, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames is the industry standard, but you can add subframes, frames only, or seconds. This is your program. I'm going to leave that at default. You choose the one you're most comfortable with. Dialog warnings, I think most of us know what those are. You're about to do something in Final Cut Pro, and it warns you. It says, you sure you want to do this? Because, you know, like there's no undo. And then there's a little tick box that you can tick it off and say, don't warn me again, and you wish you hadn't done that, you can reset them. Editing. A movie is made when it's edited, not when it's actually created. I know you need good actors and sets and all that kind of stuff, but a movie comes to life in the editing room. Editing a movie is telling a story, and you know where it got started? Not in Hollywood. It got started really in about 1917 at the Moscow School of Film, because they were doing all these political films for Lenin, and they developed the montage and the cut. That's where things got started. Here's how we control editing. Show detail trimming, which in most cases would make sense. I do want to position the playhead after the edit, but you can turn that off. Again, these are defaults. You want your inspector units as pixels or as percentages. Audio, you want to show a reference waveform. Still images. Anytime you drag a still into the timeline, it will live for four seconds. Now, you can make it bigger or smaller, but let's say you never do anything at four seconds. When you do stills, maybe for the project you're working on, they're all going to be at least 10 seconds. Change it here. Same thing with transitions. Do you want just one second duration on transitions, or do you usually use more? Again, that's up to you. I would say project to project, I like to keep things pretty similar. If my transitions for one project are going to be about three seconds. They're all going to be three seconds. Why not change it here? Playback. In playback, background render. Now let me move this over for a second. This button right here for background render says 100%. Now what that means basically is there's nothing rendering. But if I start working, that number is going to go like to zero and slowly go back up to 100% as I am working background render. And it starts after five seconds. Why would you want to turn that off? Well, there might be a reason. You don't have a really powerful system. And every time render kicks in, it just takes your workflow and it just drops it in the trash. So you say, well, I'm going to have to do that separately. I don't want it done in the background. You can turn that off. But I say don't unless you have to. Create optimized media from multicam clips. We will be working with multicam. If frames drop, stop playback and warn. No, no. Okay, don't do that to me because it's not going to have a problem when I actually produce the final product. But if frame drops are due to disk performance, sure, let me know. Now, you've got a pre-roll and a post-roll duration, which two seconds is the industry standard. You can make that anything you want it to be. The background player up here, you can change that to black, white, or checkerboard. And if you have additional AV output, I actually do, but I don't have it hooked up, you can actually use that too. Now, in importing, media storage, do you want to copy files into the current library that you created, or do you want to leave them where they are? Now, if you say copy, that means you're going to have the original, and then you're going to have a copy, and that's what I usually do, but you can change where they go. Current library makes sense, but you could choose somewhere else if you wanted to. Transcoding, creating optimized media and proxy media. Now, you can make this decision when you actually import the information, but what it does is, is it takes your media and it makes optimized versions of it. So when you're working in Final Cut Pro, you are working with a lower quality version of the media, but when you produce it, it goes back and gets the good stuff. I usually do turn those on, but you can make the decision on that when you import the information, and I want to, at least for now, keep everything at default. On video, import folders as keyword collections, and now look at everything else you got here when you import. Analyze for balanced color. It will actually look for people and tell you how many people are in a shot. Create smart collections of all these different clips. Your audio, 
analyze and fix, separate, remove. You say, well, of course I'd want to do these things. It makes perfect sense. You don't want to do it all the time. I would say half the time I'm bringing media in, I know it's good enough. I don't have to do this. The other half, sure, I don't mind doing it. I can always do it later, but I don't mind doing it. I can make the decision on these when I'm actually importing, and that's why I do leave them off, but again, that is default too. Destinations. Look at all the different destinations that you have. You can even add other destinations, like say, for example, you work with CNN. Of course you do. If you double-click it, it will add that one. You'll have to give it a name and a password to get in, of course. You have to have an account with them, in other words. Now, every one of these basically allows you to set it up so that when you actually use one of these, it's ready to go. For example, Facebook, and I do have a Facebook account, but if I sign in over here, if I need to use it, I'm already ready to go, and I can decide exactly what I want it to be. So if we come out of here now, and then you click this button over here, which is your destinations, basically you could take your video now and turn it into a DVD, turn right around and send it to Facebook, put it out on YouTube, whatever you want to do, because since you've set it up in preferences already, you're one click away. That's actually called multi-purposing, being able to take one thing and do a bunch of things with it. Don't forget to set up preferences based on your personal workflow. It can really help you out.